reports that U.S. President Joe Biden is considering major reforms to the Supreme Court. That could include term limits, something many advocates have been calling for. Currently, the nine justices on the top court serve lifetime appointments. Joining me now to discuss is Joseph Moreno. He's a former federal prosecutor and fellow at the National Security Institute. Good morning and nice to see you. Hi, Marcia. Always a pleasure. So progressives in the party have been calling for this. Biden now saying that he will look to make some major changes in the Supreme Court. What do you make of the timing? Well, I mean, color me cynical. It's four months before an election. Uh, President Biden has to tread carefully politically because of the assassination attempt last week. So I think the next best thing is to play on his supporters' anger at the Supreme Court. And this goes back about two years to the Dobbs decision, which overturned Roe v. Wade, which, of course, created a right to have an abortion. And then more recent decisions on uh, presidential immunity, which really kind of deteriorated Jack Smith's prosecutions against Donald Trump. So you have the left very angry at the Supreme Court. So I get why President Biden now is proposing these ideas about ethics rules and term limits. But at the end of the day, it really has no chance of passing anytime soon. No, because it has to go through Congress. Well, correct. And so one house of Congress is currently controlled by the Republicans. It is very likely the Republicans will take the second house, the Senate, in next year. But we'll see about how the elections go. Um, but there's no way that they would endorse something like this, particularly so close to an election. Do you think that Republicans or anyone, anyone on the right would support these ide this idea of term limits? Well, keep in mind, I mean, there are 890 federal judges throughout the system, including the nine on the Supreme Court. All of them are sit in an office for life. They, they can resign whenever they want. So are we talking about changing it just for the nine on the Supreme Court or for all 890 of them? I think that's one thing to consider. The other thing is you'd have to figure out how it works with those nine that are currently sitting. I can see Republicans maybe getting behind this if it's done in a way that's fair, meaning that it's not, it's not, it doesn't give a preference to whomever is in the White House as far as replacing them. So if it's perhaps staggered or perhaps these nine get to continue serving for life and then new ones are subject to term limits, I can see maybe that happening. But right now you'd get a lot of skepticism that for the first time in almost 100 years, you have conservatives that now dominate the Supreme Court. So the fact that now this proposal is coming out by a Democrat in the White House, I think you'd have a hard time getting it by any Republicans. How much faith and support do you think Americans have in the Supreme Court right now? Um, certainly, many on the left would say it's, it's become a political tool. I mean, again, you know, Liberals dominated the Supreme Court since the 1940s, and it's only in the last 10 years that conservatives have a working majority. So the idea that for 80 or 90 years the court was not political and now it is uh, because liberals don't like their decisions, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I think the American public respects the third branch of government. They are a co-equal branch along with Congress and the executive. Uh, and, and frankly, I don't think people appreciate the attacks on the judiciary. I mean, I feel like they think politics are left to the other branches. So at the end of the day, I think the American public is, is fine with the Supreme Court. And I don't think this is going to get much traction. Joseph, thanks for being with us today. Joseph Marini is a former federal prosecutor and fellow at the National Security Institute.